And so there were those people who would just go rampant with language, be like, oh, this is a word, let's sort of make this word now, yay. Um, and they swiftly got weeded out by moderators, pretty much. It was me. Um, <laughs> next in line, behind them, was Perk Tom, this guy, who was brilliant. Um, Don, Don, I can't roll my arms. And he would create a lot of words by adding words together and by figuring out a root and then making new words from a root. And I wasn't comfortable with this, and I had some issues with this for a while. Um, now it's all right. But it was really, really interesting that there was a whole camp of people who didn't like Perkton at all because he kept doing this. And we're like, no, Frommer hasn't made that word. That hasn't the word, isn't the word from the actual can canonical dictionary. So no, we can't do that. And that was really funny. So that was me. That was my camp. But I used to do things as well. So if I saw a single usage, I would think, well, maybe I can use it this way. Um, I'm trying to think of a good example. Yeah, if I, if I saw one word used transitively, I would use it transitively and die transitively as well. So I would give it two objects. So I would say, for instance, I would say, oh, hey, con, spibang, I aim to kill. And someone would be like, no, all we know about aim is that it takes an object. You know, I aim the arrow. You can't say, I aim, and then plus a verb phrase. Um, I hope you understood that. Um, and so that happened. And these two guys yelled at me for that. So that's Stephen and William. And they were very much, we have this example. We can do this. And that was really annoying, because it was still annoying, because we had a lot of questions which weren't answered, so you couldn't do a lot of things. One of them, which I'm still, we still have, is words for would, might, and could. It's really hard to speak without using the words for would, might, and could. Like, I can't say, I could go to the store, or I may go to the store. That's impossible. Uh, and so that happened, and that was really funny. But now we ask those questions, we ask all those questions. We know most about the language now. And we were able to have a whole conversation. So while I was in California, um, up in the Red Boots, literally sitting there talking to each other, not painful. Um, it did not be. And so yeah, it happens. Um, that's pretty cool. We came with some great, great examples like this. This was an example about infix ordering. So we didn't know if it app was before Ike or Ike was before app. But this basically means to app Ike out there, Kio, Nina, which means he's about to drink himself to death, and I'm really glad about it. Um, for some odd reason, everyone in the room decided this was about me. Uh, I assume it's because I go on Skype too often when I'm drunk. Anyway, yeah, so it's a truck here, moving on. So that's not me, and that's pretty much what not me is about, and we're still going strong, and it's cool. Yes. You want to talk about this? Then there's the Throcky. So the Throcky is from George R. R. Martin's series, A Song of Ice and Fire, which is awesome. Fancy series, which is the New York Times bestseller, which is ridiculously good because people die in it and because there's sex and blood and gore and pubic hair. <laughs> which is anathema for most fantasy. I mean, if you read anything else, I mean, Tolkien, I mean, who does the Elves laundry? He never, he never says. Ever. Not one passage. <laughs> um, and this guy has everything, and so it's really cool. And in it, there are these people called the Thraki, who are these basically Mongols. And he has a few examples of like little tiny words, like, you know, Lajaki. Actually, it's not. Uh, he has so few examples. He has like 50 words. But he's a few. Um, some of them are really funny, like, Naranha, like, the dragon rides inside her. Like, why the book? Anyway, um, we set up a, a site for that, so that's me and the admin of not me. is creating a language. It's amazing, because there's going to be an actual language now, so we'll be able to read the book and be like, ah, I can say everything in this book in the truck. Um, he's made a ton of languages. He's the secretary of the Language Creation Society, which I believe is somewhere else in there. Um, and basically, he was hired because HBO is making A Song of Ice and Fire into a series. And it's going to be awesome. And it'll be on Sky, so all you guys can watch it as well. Um, and so everything that I've had to imagine, because I've read the books eight times because I'm a massive nerd, everything that I've had to imagine will finally be on the screen, and it'll be totally cool. Um, and there will be death. This is the guy who made it. That's George R. R. Martin again. He looks like a character from his own novels. Which I love. <laughs> <laughs> um, and these are the Thraki people for what they sort of look like. And it's going to look like that.
that, except more awesome in the series because they're going to actually be there speaking. Um, and so what we did was when we found out there's going to be a language, we created a, a form, me and Paoing, Paoing, Sebast, Sebastian, as he's called. Um, and over August, I read the books and wrote down every single possible thing about the language ever, ever, about anything actually to do with George R. R. Martin and language. And now we have all the information here, and we're just waiting for um, David Peterson to give us dribbles on this blog. So David Peterson is basically saying every now and then, here's another word, it means warrior. <laughs> and then we write it down, and then we're really happy. But once the series come out, we'll actually be able to say a lot more about the Throcky and what it's like. Um, which is, that's an interesting problem, really, if you think about it, because David Peterson made the language, and I'm trying to speak it, so I'm failing already. So then there's David Peterson, who took it from the books. So George R. R. Martin originally wrote it, so he has to adapt it to that. And then there's going to be HBO actors who are going to be messing up when they pronounce it, because that's what happens. It happens in Avatar a lot of times. And so you have things like oys as a word and not be, which doesn't make any sense because you can't end the syllable with an S. And that's really annoying. But um, you're going to have this strange canonicity, which one's correct. And that seems to happen with art lengths. Um, which is cool. And it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. The errors. But anyway, here's what it sounds like, since you probably want to hear. So. That has stuck, baby. She's at home. Which is awesome. That means from nonsense. <laughs> it's ridiculously <laughs> long. I'll do that again. <laughs> so that means pride, I think. It's from the Jahak, which is the braid. Um, and. <laughs> Which is cool, so I can't roll my R's in there either, so I'm going to mess up already. But um, this is basically what the language looks like right now. We have like 50 words. Um, it's based on Russian, which is really cool. And by based on, I mean it's derived from Russian. So instead of just talking about three random languages and what they are, um, I'm trying to talk about common as well. And what's really cool is that you get this thing where if you study the language, it makes its way into a common language. So Tolkien had studied Finnish and Welsh. And so Quentin and Sindarin sound like Finnish and Welsh. David Pearson had studied Russian and Turkish. And so his languages sound like Russian and Turkish. You have a really weird thing where David Pearson also made like nine languages already. And so his languages also sound like Kamakawi and Siler. Um, they won't sound like Kamakawi because that's based on Hawaiian. They aren't. But they will sound like Siler. Um, and that's just really, really interesting. So basically, what you know about languages obviously goes into what you make in a con language. If you don't know something, it's not going to go in. And so, not be sounds a lot like Malay. I've had Google Translate tell me this page is in Malay. Do you want to translate it? <laughs> um, which I wrote yes, and there was no words at all. <laughs> but it sounds like Malay because Paul Fromer knew Malay and Persian. And so basically, it's a linguistics exercise. What you know goes into it. And so you have to be a pretty good linguist in order to make a con language. And you have to be good at knowing about languages in order to learn one. Um, which is it's pretty awesome. I like that. Right. This is the dictionary. These are all the words we have. Like, that's it. There's nothing. I shouldn't even be talking about Nathrophy at all. Because there's, there's nothing. nothing. Um, so let's move on to Lachsiyesh. Um, I was really intelligent when I created the name of this language to not create a voiced Trildar, because I can't do those, so it's voiceless. But no one can pronounce Lachiesh, and so I called it Lama. Um, we sell shirts. I made this. You can buy them. Buy them. <laughs> anyway, and so I decided, I was talking to my brother-in-law about Lothraki one day, and I'm like, I should probably make a con link. He's like, yeah, you should. And I'm like, yeah, I should. And so I made a blog, like everyone who does that. And I decided, let's see if I can make one in one month. I'm going back to school in a month. I have 30 days. I'll make a post every day, 500 words a day. I'm going to make a thousand words. I'm going to make a full conversation at the end of it. I'll make a song. I'll write a poem. I'll translate a story. I'll translate Babel. And some of that stuff happened. <laughs> Most of it didn't. But I did manage for 29 days straight to write 500 words a day about a language which I had just created. So I started from nothing. Um, I say 29 days because the bachelor party was the 30th day, so that didn't really work. Um, and this was the blog. It was really fun. I had it on a blog roll. I think so. I had like something like 200 hits a day towards the end, 
which is sweet. So there's actually a market out there. There are people who are interested um, in conglings, which is ridiculous, because if there were, then this, I wouldn't be talking to an empty room right now. <laughs> anyway, so I started with, uh, with nothing. And so on the first day, I'm like, OK, I got to make some sounds. And so I made this. And what's really fun about conglings is you can do pretty much freaking anything. Um, and so there's two really weird things in here. Well, four. There's a few really weird things. First off, there's an mmm, but not an mmm. So the M is made with the teeth. Someone at, once, at one point said that's never happened. Uh, that happens in conlangs. You get stuff which doesn't really work at all. Um, I like that. I have a small theory that maybe the people who spoke it didn't like humming. But. And then there's another cool thing where palatals. I liked learning about adjectives and not be, so I'm like, well, let's make palatals. And so uh, <coughs> I can't do them. I still can't do them. I tried. It didn't work. But basically, you know, you live and you learn. And so now I know I can't do palatals. But it's possible. And this is a language which could possibly exist, which is really sweet. Another thing is that, again, the languages you know reflect what's going to be in a con lang if you make one. Um, I know the vast majority of you will not go out and make a con lang after hearing this lecture, to which I have resigned myself. But if you did, um, and you knew Nahuatl, you might want to put in the language, or Hlachiesh has two L, so it's a voice lateral fricative. There's no normal L rule, which is weird, but whatever. Um, here are the vowels. I did not go with the easy option of five vowels, and it said opted for around 30. Um, 30 in combination, if you count the different things I did, because I decided to make it tonal, like Chinese, because that'd be fun. So ha is different from ha. That was really stupid. That was really, really stupid. No one's ever going to learn this language, ever. Um, possibly because the verbs are also messed up. And so I'm in a spectral system instead of a tense system. And so basically, you have three different aspects. Now, an aspect is like I was running versus I ran. You know, one of them is still going in the past, and the other one is stopped. That's aspect. There's 30 different ways you can mark different sorts of aspect in this language. It's based off Navajo, because I thought Navajo was really cool on Wikipedia. So I decided, let's see if I can make a Navajo language. I could. I'm never going to speak it, ever. Which is really sad, because there's sentences like, which is the man is going to all the islands, once to each of them. He's kidding. It's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Why would anyone do that? Because they're fools. Anyway, um, so here's some more. I asked a friend of mine, William, actually, the guy who's really good, not me, asked me to give three sentences, and so I tried to translate them. Um, I think I have sound. The cheek bow. Dao wo wo. not actually there. Chong kha pil ha. Kla moye chiko. So the rain stopped, and then it wasn't rain. After, I continually caught salmon for a while. So, do wash bo dao wo. Tun tas. It is now in my mind, but let's just stop it. <laughs> um, so that's what it sounds like, sort of. It's ridiculous. I decided to, I already had a world set up um, because I like Tolkien since I was 10, and I really wanted to make my own Tolkien story. And so I have, I spent four years reading on and off about astrophysics because it's a dual planet system, because I'm ridiculous. And then, Geology. So now I have like these volcanic islands in the middle of the sea. And I still don't have any plot. I have no people. But they have a language, which is awesome. <laughs> um, and so you have weird things like salmon. And I have a word for limpid, but not a word for betray. That happens. Um, and so you have other weird things as well, like you can make up whatever you want to do. So bo is an awesome word I really, really like. Basically, it means hello, but also let's start talking, let's share information, let's being this together. It also means this is a start of a story. It's a narrative. It's not an actual thing. It only exists between our minds. And it means hello, of course. So every single time you say hello in this language, boah, you have to say, let's start sharing information. That'd be really fun. And I mean, that's ridiculous. And I don't know of any language that actually does that. But I can make it up. Yay. 